Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Marta Rose. Of course, of course, my friends, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So we're going to kick things off with something rather interesting from AMD, as some cool stuff have popped up in a Linux patch. So we have seen various interesting things revealed or hinted at in Linux kernel patches, and what we might be seeing here is something that we could see in the feature set for Epic 2, which of course is based on the Zen 2 process. So what we have here is AMD Quality of Service, or QoS support. And we have a bit of a direct quote here, which reads, quote, this series adds support for AMD 64 architectural extensions for platform quality of service. These extensions are intended to provide for the monitoring of the usage of certain system resources by one or more processors and for the separate allocation and enforcement of limits on the use of certain system resources by one or more processors. The monitoring and enforcement are not necessarily applied across the entire system, but in general applied to a QoS domain which corresponds to some shared system resource. So I'm sure some of you are nodding your heads going, hmm, hmm, those are some words you just said, care to explain? Well basically what the initial QoS functionality is for is for L3 cache allocation enforcement, L3 cache occupancy monitoring, and L3 code data prioritization, as well as memory bandwidth enforcement and allocation. So, some of you may be going, hang on, isn't that a touch familiar? It feels like I'm reminded of something. And yes, you're probably reminded of Intel's RTD, or Resource Director Technology, which basically allows the optimization of software in different environments. But of course, given that this is Epic, obviously it's primarily going to be targeted towards the server market. We also see, separate from this Linux patch, a few rumblings and rumors across the internet. Now this of course is rumors, so the usual caveats do apply. But the rumours are that we'll see a significant redesign of Zen 2, with larger differences in the design of the CCX and the cores, but again, there's barely any information on it. But essentially, the TLDR here is that the second gen of Epic will have better support to allow optimization of resources for developers and server admins. Oh, and one last thing. Other rumours are also saying that Zen 2, both on Epic and just the normal Ryzen processors, aren't just a slight tweak to the cores and improvements in clock speed. And AMD have been pretty damn confident that they were taking Intel on directly here with the Ice Lake processors. So they are designing these Zen 2 processors to take on Ice Lake and they seem very, very confident in that because, well, they anticipated that these would be out on the market earlier. So AMD are very, very confident in that, or at least they seem to be. So if that's the case, it would make sense that they'd be bringing more to the table than just a improvement in clock speed and tweak to the cores. So of course, we're going to have to wait and see what Zen 2 brings to the table, but I would fully expect it to bring a fair amount. I mean, Zen Plus brought a fair amount to the table, and that was obviously but it's still the same architecture, just better. So the next one up is definitely going to be interesting. So let's move on, shall we? So our next item on our itinerary is actually regarding NVIDIA and the RTX series. Now, of course, at Gamescom, we finally saw what they were offering with touring when it comes to gaming. But one thing we didn't learn about in terms of release date was, of course, the RTX 2070. We learned the 20 tie and 2080 release dates. Of course, the tie has now been pushed back. But now we finally have the release date for the RTX 2080, sorry, the 2070, should I say, thanks to a tweet from the official NVIDIA GeForce account. So this is going to be coming out on October the 17th. Now, they did kind of say October for this, so this obviously is very much smack bang in the middle of that. And of course, we are going to be seeing a TU-106 GPU for the RTX 2080. 70. Now, a main sticking point with this card, as to be honest, with most of the touring lineup, is the price, because when compared to, say, the 1070 and the 1070 Ti, it is rather expensive, because it's going to be expected to be retailing at 499 US dollars. And there is the caveat as well that it does not have SLI support. So, mm, it's Obviously, specs-wise, we are seeing 2304, so 2304 CUDA cores and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, with 36 RT cores and 288 Tensor cores. So, obviously, there is the RT kind of coming into things here, and this obviously is the cheapest RTX card that we know about, so far at least. But it is still more expensive versus the GTX 1070s and the 1070 Ties, of course. 
and it might be a bit of an ask for a 1070 to be this expensive or it might not i mean again it is the by far the cheapest but it doesn't change the fact that it is more expensive versus predecessors so yeah that's definitely going to be a bit of a sticking point for a lot of people i think so we're going to finish things up this evening with a bit of a tussle between qualcomm and apple so the battle between these two companies has been going on for quite some time and now we have another firing shot from Qualcomm itself who filed a lawsuit against Apple on Monday, so that being yesterday at the time of recording, that the company was sharing quote-unquote vast swathes of confidential information with Intel. So just to kind of give you a refresher, back in November of last year, Qualcomm find a, filed excuse me, a lawsuit against Apple. And it was for these very same accusations of sharing confidential chip software in order to aid Intel. So what are these new charges I hear you ask? Well basically they're accusing Apple of ignoring a software agreement that it signed with Qualcomm and that it also shared trade secrets. And we're not just talking like oh if you put that here instead of here it does really good. No it's actual apparently alleged Qualcomm source code and internal software tools which apparently, according to these accusations, Intel used to help its engineers improve LTE modem performance. Now I also have some rather strong words that were made by the Qualcomm General Counsel Donald Rosenberg who spoke to CNBC regarding this particular lawsuit and he said, quote, unlawful use of Qualcomm's valuable trade secrets to try and help a competitor catch up irreparably harms us and must not be allowed to continue. So Qualcomm are saying basically that they want these um, additional charges added to the original charges that it filed against Intel back in November 2017. They aren't providing any proof or uh, evidence to support, rather I should say, the allegations, but obviously they have been doing digging and investigating as part of the ongoing um, legal proceedings between the two companies, and they have said that they have found some things between Intel and Apple and apparently, according to sources, the evidence is not just email correspondence, but also source code development history from Apple itself. Obviously, we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. But obviously, if this turns out to go against Apple, the implications could be rather huge, to say the least. Like, the fines are probably going to be monstrous if they do have to pay them. And obviously, they are Apple. They have more money than the entire world, it feels like. So I'm sure they'd be fine as a company, but they would undoubtedly feel the burn and would see a kind of effect on the industry itself. Not just smartphones, of course, but with their own personal computers as well, Macs and so on, MacBooks, blah, 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 blah. So it definitely will have a sort of ripple effect, what that ripple effect will be. Unfortunately, I've misplaced my crystal ball. That thing is never to be found when I actually need it. So yeah, it's, this is uh, getting ugly to say the least. And uh, I don't think Apple are just going to take this line down like oh go on then guys but yeah it's uh, definitely uh, heating up between these two companies to say the least anyway that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching as always your support is highly appreciated i'll see you next time bye bye